Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome again to our session of the Delaware Senate, uh, our virtual forum, our second time coming together. And it's a pleasure to be here with my colleagues and members of the public as we have dealt with the uh, COVID pandemic and continue to work diligently uh, for our state. At this time, I'd like to turn to our secretary. Madam Secretary, any communications or reports, please? Madam President, a communication from the Office of the Governor. Mr. Assistant Secretary, would you please read in communications? Chief of Delaware, Office of the Governor, John Carney, Governor, dated June 11th, 2020, to the Honorable Bethany Hall Long, Lieutenant Governor, State of Delaware, referencing Judge of the Superior Court Madam of the President. State of Delaware. Madam President. Senator McBride. May so much be considered reading of the uh, communication. Um, so much can be considered reading of the communication, sir. Thank you. Madam Secretary, additional communications? Madam President, Delaware State Senate, President Pro Tempore, list of pre-file legislation, session two, read to the Senate record, June 15th, 2020, June 3rd, 2020, Senate Bill 233. Yep. Senator McBride, would you, of your pro tems reading, sir? May so much be considered reading. So you want to go to the majority leader now. Yep, so much is considered. Thank you, sir. Senator Poor. Thank you, Madam President. I move that the Senate adjourn until Tuesday, the 16th of June at 2.17 p.m. Thank you, madams. We want to remind those listening to put yourselves on mute at this time, and we are going to adjourn this session, and the session will reconvene, and at this time, I'm going to turn to our Senator Darius Brown, who will read in his prayer, or say his prayer, and I'm going to ask members in the attitude of prayer. We will follow that by our Pledge of Allegiance. So, Senator Brown, to you, sir. Thank you, Madam President. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for giving us another day. As we convene today to go over various important legislation, we implore your presence and assistance to do the work that's needed. Let our minds be clear, grant us strength, and most importantly, understanding. May everything done this day be for your greater honor and glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Madam Secretary, if you would kindly call attendance roll call. Senator Benini. Here. Here. Senator Brown. Present. Present. Senator Cloutier. Present. Present. Senator Del Colo. Present. Present. Senator Ennis. Here. Here. Senator Hansen. Here. Here. Senator Hawker. Present. Present. Senator Lawson. Present. Present. Senator Lockman. Here. Here. Senator Lopez. Here. Here. Senator McBride. Here. Here. Senator McDowell. Here. Here. Senator Pardee. Here. Here. Senator Pettyjohn. Present. Present. Senator Poor. Here. Here. Senator Richardson. Senator Richardson. Senator Hello? Richardson. Um, Senator Richardson. It just said the host would like me to unmute. Your internet connection is unstable. Uh, 
Senator Richardson will be marked present. Uh, with... Senator Richardson, marked present. Senator Sokola. Here. Here. Senator Sturgeon. I think I'm almost Here. there. Okay. Here. Senator Townsend. Here. Here. Senator Walsh. Present. Present. Senator Wilson. Present. Present. Madam President, the attendance roll call, 21. A quorum being present, the Senate is now in session. Madam Secretary, do you have minutes of our previous day? 10th legislative day, second session, Madam May 27. Senator Poor. Thank you. I move so much be considered the reading of the minutes. So moved, Madam Sec Madam Majority Leader, to you, ma'am. Senator Poor. Thank you, Madam President. Yes. At this time, um, I am going to um, uh, actually yield to the floor sponsor, uh, Senator Darius Brown, for Senate Bill 191. Senator Brown. Yes, Madam, Madam President. President. Madam President. Yes, if Senator. If I might Brown. interrupt, I've, there may be communications from the House that have to be read in. I'm not um, sure. I just want to double check. Uh, yes, there are, and we Thank were you. getting to that. That is good. I love the virtual. We're all in sync. Uh, yes, right. there will Thank be uh, House communications read. Uh, Madam Madam President, it's Senator Benini. Yes, Senator Benini. Uh, I apologize to, to interrupt. I just wanted to make certain that Senator Richardson is squared away technology-wise, and if necessary, perhaps we could do what the, the majority leader suggested, have him call in, because I, I want to make sure that he's uh, completely uh, with us. We will uh, find that out, sir. Uh, we will have DTI be assessing that while we'll go ahead and deal with the housekeeping of reading in at the moment, the communication. How is that? Thank you. So we will make sure before we take any official action that the Senator can hear us and is part of our body. So during Thank that you. time, while DTI is assessing, we're gonna go ahead to our Deputy Assistant Secretary to read in House communication. The House wishes to inform the Senate that it has passed House Bill number 269 House Bill number 263 with House Amendment 1, House Bill number 285 with fiscal note, Senate Bill number 96, Senate Bill number 177, Senate Bill number 195 with Senate Amendment 1, Senate Bill number 196, Senate Bill number 200 with Senate Amendment 1, House Bill number 297, House Bill number 301, House Bill number 331, House Bill number 334, House Bill number 335, House Concurrent Resolution number 78, and Senate Concurrent Resolution number 67. Madam President, that concludes the reading of the communication from the House. Thank you uh, for those communications. And during that time, I'm gonna now call out to, uh, Senator Richardson is being shown as muted by our host. So we are gonna to check to see if our Senator is with us for those who have just signed into the Delaware Senate. We are ensuring that everyone is present who are members. And I don't know if DTI can report to us at this time. Madam Senator, President, we are looking yes. into Senator Richardson's computer issues at this time. Uh, we have him on the phone and we are troubleshooting currently. Thank you. Okay. Is, can he hear us on the phone? Because by our rules, he could participate and listen on audio on the phone. Stand by, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. And in the meantime, with our members who are here, what I would ask uh, is that we wait patiently and to our majority leader, we can probably ask for a quiet sitting recess. We've never had this before with the virtual world. How about that? Certainly, Madam President. <laughs> so we will be in a quiet seated recess.
they are still working on that.
Welcome back to the uh, Delaware Senate. Senate has come back from recess. And at this time, I will turn it back to our Senate Majority Leader, Senator Poor, who will resume our session, probably returning to Senator Brown. Senator Poor, to you, ma'am. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, just to go back to earlier uh, comments, at this time, I'm going to yield to Senator Darius Brown for Senate Bill 119. <laughs> Thank you. Senator Brown. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to have Senate Bill 191 brought before the Senate for consideration and read in a final title only uh, with suspension of the rules. Thank you, sir. And again, to members under suspension of rules, we're going to ask that uh, Senate Bill 191 be brought forth and read in by title only. Our Assistant Secretary will do so at this time. And I want to remind individuals this will be a two-thirds vote. Mr. Secretary, if you would read in, please. Madam President, I am in possession of all the original legislation. Thank you. Senate Bill number 191, sponsored by Senator Brown, Senator McBride, Senator Lopez, Senator Sturgeon, Representative Dorsey Walker, Representative Minor Brown and others, an act proposing an amendment to Article I of the Delaware Constitution relating to equal rights. Madam President, that concludes the reading of Senate Bill number 191 by title only. Senate Bill number 191 before the Senate, Senator Brown. Yes, Madam President, um, because we are here virtually and this is the first leg of this amendment with the support of members, uh, I'll I'll uh, be brief today uh, and look forward to everyone's support uh, for the second leg where I'll add uh, more in-depth comments. Um, today we have Senate Bill 191 before us, uh, which would amend the Delaware Constitution to add equal rights under the law um, that should not be denied or abridged on account of race, color, or national origin uh, in addition to sex. Uh, this is the first leg of this constitutional amendment uh, with the support of members of the Senate uh, and the House uh, during this 150th session. And upon its passage, it would then also have to be passed uh, during the 151st session of the Delaware General Assembly. Thank you, Senator Brown. And uh, again, I know that members know this is a two thirds vote, historic legislation. I see a hand has been raised by Senator Del Calo. Thank you, Madam President. I'd request to be added as a co-sponsor. So noted. Madam President. Senator Poor. I also ask to be added. So noted, ma'am. Okay. okay, see no other hands. Up Senator, Senator Cloutier. Cloutier. Thank you. Um, I was added to it. Could you check when you say and others if I'm included? Otherwise, I'd like to be added. So noted, Senator Hansen. I'd like to be added as a co-sponsor if not already. So noted, trying to see who else's hands. I may have to turn to Val or someone. <laughs> Senator Walsh. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to be added as also. So noted, Senator Pettyjohn. Uh, yes, Madam President, I'd like to be added. I think I have everyone. Senator McDowell, uh, Senator Pardee, Madam President. Yep, Senator McDowell. You have to unmute yourself, Senator McDowell. I would like to be added as a co-sponsor, except I have not been able to clarify whether the fact that I am retiring between the first and the second leg, that would complicate the issue. So even though I'd very much like to be a recorded as a sponsor of this bill, I'm going to, I'm not going to do so, but I will vote yes. Senator Wilson has your hand up. Yes, I'd like to be added as co-sponsor, please. So noted, I think I have everyone. Senator Did Pardee, I miss? Madam President. Pardee, Senator Pardee. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to have my name added as well. Thank you. I think we have everyone here. 
Madam Secretary, would you kindly call roll on Senate Bill 191, a reminder, two thirds vote, please. My apologies, Madam President. Oh, Senator Townsend, before roll call, you caught us just in time. Certainly, thank you. Just, um, I'm not sure if we need to turn away on Senator McDowell's point, but I do want to note that a decent number of the senators who asked to be added as co-sponsors were already on already were co-sponsors on the original bill. So I thank them for that. Um, but Senator McDowell is among them. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to emphasize that if we do think there's any kind of legal concern uh, with regard to a retiring senator being listed as a sponsor and therefore not having the second leg be entirely uniform, um, which I hope that's not the standard, by the way, uh, I do want to note that he is still listed as a co-sponsor. Um, and so it wasn't a matter of him not adding himself. It would be a matter of him coming off the bill. And uh, I am- Ma Madam Secretary, I'd Senator also like Hoffer. to be added. I tried to raise my hand, but I'd also like to be added. And uh, it has been confirmed to me through our legal experts and parliamentary procedures that that is not an issue for Senator McDowell. So Senator Del Calo had had his hand raised. Senator Del Calo. What you said. What I, I said, okay. I you think we have- Senator McDowell, your name yeah. shall be present. No, I'm going to put my name on the bill. Yes, Thanks. yes, you, sh you will be on the bill, sir. Okay, Senator Brown, to you, sir, again. I think we're yes, ready madam. for your roll call. Yes, Madam President. Senator Brown. Ask for roll call. Madam Secretary, would you kindly call roll on Senate Bill 191, two thirds vote required. Thank you. Senator Benini. Yes. Yes. Senator Brown. Yes. Yes. Senator Plutier. Yes. Yes. Senator Del Colo. Yes. Yes. Senator Ennis. Yes. Yes. Senator Hansen. Yes. Yes. Senator Hawker. Senator Hawker. Space bar, hit your space bar. Yes, I had my finger on the space bar. I had it unmoved up top. Yes, Senator Lawson. Yes. Yes, Senator Lawson. Yes. Yes, Senator Lopez. Yes. Yes, Senator McBride. Yes. Yes, Senator McDowell. Yes. Yes, Senator Pardee. Yes. Yes, Senator Pettyjohn. Yes. Yes, Senator Poor. Yes. Yes, Senator Richardson. Yes. Yes, yes. Senator Sokola. Yes. Yes, Senator Sturgeon. Yes. Yes, Senator Townsend. Yes. Yes, Senator Walsh. Yes. Yes, Senator Wilson. Yes. Yes. Madam President, the roll call on Senate Bill 191, 21 yes, 21 yes. Having received the required sufficient number of votes, Senate Bill 191 declared passed the Senate. Senator Poor. Thank you, Madam President. This time I'm gonna to yield to Senator Hansen for Senate Substitute 1 for Senate Bill 243. Senator Hansen. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to ask that Senate Substitute number one to Senate Bill 243 be brought before the Senate, read by tunnel only, for consideration under suspension of rules. Senate Bill 243, and the substitute here thereby lifted off of the table, will be read in now by our Assistant Secretary by title only. Senate substitute number one for Senate Bill number 243, sponsored by Senator Hansen, Senator Poor, Senator Del Colo, Representative Brady, Representative Bombeck, and Representative Griffith, an act to amend Title 29 of the Delaware Code relating to the Freedom of Information Act. Madam President, that concludes the reading of Senate Substitute Number 1 for Senate Bill Number 243. Senate Substitute 1 to Senate Bill 243 before the Senate, Senator Hansen. Thank you, Madam President. Over the last few months, we've all learned a lot about virtual meetings, how to take part in them, how they operate, how to hold them and their limitations. We've learned to do all of this because of the inability to meet in person 
as a result of the state of emergency brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. Without the ability to meet virtually, the functioning of our government was very challenged. We passed HCR 85 in order to adopt rules of procedure for meeting virtually during the state of emergency. But as you know, a resolution is only in effect until the end of the session in which it is passed. So that's only in effect for us until the end of June. And we're not yet out of the woods with COVID-19. And we don't know what the future holds with regard to a resurgence or the rise of another pandemic. So one important thing that this bill does is it incorporates the provisions of House Concurrent Resolution 85 so that if we find ourselves in another state of emergency, we can continue to meet as we've been doing over the past three months. This bill allows all public bodies to meet virtually in the case of another state of emergency and sets the rules for compliance under our Freedom of Information Act, including notice, transparency, and public participation. But recognizing that there may be opportunities to prevent another state of emergency by limiting in-person meeting requirements, this bill also allows the governor by executive order to allow all public bodies to hold virtual meetings in which all members can participate virtually in order to avoid another public health emergency. And this is permissive. It doesn't require a public body to meet virtually. It allows a public body to meet virtually. Importantly, working with a disability community, this bill allows any member of a public body with a disability, as already defined elsewhere in our code, the ability to participate virtually on that body as a reasonable accommodation. But outside of the context of a state of emergency, an executive order to avoid another public health emergency, or a member with a disability, this bill also allows public bodies that are advisory in nature, advisory in nature to meet virtually with some important limitations. Not all public bodies, but only those that are advisory in nature. This is a concept that the sponsors and I have been actively discussing with open government advocates, disability advocates, our own DTI and others for well over a year. The vast majority of our citizen boards, commissions, task forces, and councils are manned by volunteer citizens that are charged with providing advice to administrative agencies, to us, the legislature, and others in government. They meet to review data and discuss the programs or operations of particular governmental bodies, to provide advice and recommendations to governmental bodies and members of the public on particular issues, to confer and issue opinions regarding legislation on particular public policy issues, to provide support and direction for particular public policy goals and other things of an advisory nature. These are considered advisory bodies under the legislation. There are other boards and commissions and councils that meet to decide whether to grant or deny certain rights, remedies, and privileges to specific persons such as permits, licenses, appeals, or other decisions by the board that have legal significance in a subsequent hearing. These are not considered advisory boards under the legislation. Now, many times advisory bodies have difficulty conducting business because business can only be conducted when a quorum of the advisory body is present at the meeting location in person. That's the current law. Some advisory bodies go months without being able to make quorum. They become discouraged, the advisory body stops holding regular meetings, and it eventually becomes ineffectual. This legislation allows members of an advisory body the ability to virtually participate in a meeting and count towards quorum. As is the case with House Concurrent Resolution 85, virtual participation can be accomplished either by the ability to see and hear the board member or just hear the board member. This is a position requested by the disability community since as they explained, sometimes a person with a disability is not in a physical condition or place that they would like to be viewed. And sometimes the person that they rely upon to help them operate the equipment that would be needed in order to be visible is not available. Another important requirement of advisory bodies being able to meet virtually 
is the requirement that an anchor location for the meeting be established where members of the public are allowed to attend in person. Although we've made strides in utilizing technology to conduct virtual meetings, we've also come to experience the shortfalls in our technology. These shortfalls include the knowledge that significant portions of our state are not yet served with the quality of internet service necessary to support virtual participation in which the participant can be heard and be seen. And even where such service exists, there are members in our community that cannot afford the technology to participate virtually. Recognizing that we are all going to continue to be a part of this experiment going forward in utilizing virtual technology. And we're going to learn many things about meeting virtually, about what works, what doesn't work. This legislation will sunset on June 30th, 2021. So it's in just about a year. This will give us additional time to assess how meeting virtually under this legislation meets our needs as a community. And we can change any or all of the requirements in this bill or simply extend the requirements with the benefit of 2020 hindsight. So lastly, I'd like to thank our Department of Justice for their support and work on this bill, as well as members of our disability community, our open government advocates, and many others. I'll take any questions or comments? Sorry about Madam that, Secretary, I had myself I muted. Question. Yes, Senator Hawker is his hand up as um, do a couple other members. Senator Hawker? Yes, I have a question that no town is forced to go to a virtual meeting, right? It's all volunteer. And the yes, reason why I, I say question, if, if a town like Bethany Beach is forced to have a virtual meetings, uh, they will have to have a charter change. Um, that, that's correct, Senator Hawker. I'd like to ask um, our attorney, uh, Deb Gottschalk, that has helped to work on the legislation to also respond as well. So privilege is granted uh, for Deb Gottschalk. And when she is done, we also have hands raised by Senators Cloutier and Benini. Senator I thought Turner. I heard the sponsor. I thought Senator I heard the sponsor say that it was volunteer. Senator Ocker, we will have Debbie Gokshalk, who's been called, uh, can answer that directly herself as well. Um, privilege of the floor is, the virtual floor, is granted to Debbie Gokshalk. Hi, good afternoon. For the record, I'm Debbie Gokshalk from the Division of Research. And uh, yes, uh, Senator Hawker, your understanding is correct that the um, holding a virtual meeting is completely voluntary under this legislation. Okay. It, Therefore, I'll be okay with the bill. Thank you, Debbie. Um, any other questions? I know that Senator Bonini had a question or hand raised as did Senator Cloutier and- So, and so Madam, like, Madam Chair, it's, I apologize. It's uh, Senator Bonini. I did have a question for uh, the, the attorney and also on, on the bill for the sponsor, so please tell me how to proceed. Question, you said for the bill, what I would like to say, if you don't have one for the attorney, we'll put you in wait if anyone else has a question for the attorney. Did you say, I'm having a little uh, delay have, with my audio. If you would proceed so to I, I the, um, the witness, the witness, it's no different than when we were in the chamber. We have currently privileged- I do have a question, um, I do have a question so. for the witness. Okay, well, let's Madam go Chair, there, I do have a sir. question. For the yep, Thank you. let's do that. Thanks, go ahead. So uh, my question is, yes, the, the, to follow up on Senator Hawker's question, the meeting is uh, voluntary, but could individual members citing this legislation in, uh, in addition to those with disabilities, could they insist on attending virtually? Again, Debbie Gottschalk, um, uh, when you're talking, no, they cannot. If the only reason they, can, they could insist on attending virtually for a public body is if they are a member uh, with, a, and with a disability and requesting the virtual attendance as a reasonable accommodation for their disability. And 
the legislation uh, references the well-established law on reasonable accommodation. So if it's an undue burden uh, for the public body to provide the electronic participation, um, it does not have to be done under reasonable accommodation law. Okay, and, and Madam President, if I may just quick follow up, thank you. And, and so who decides, for instance, uh, town, a town council is uh, deciding one way or the other whether they're gonna be holding virtual or not, is that done via the charter, by the majority vote, or is it the presiding officer, or how is that, how is that each individual town or advisory committee uh, how do they decide? Um, for the bill does not say how the public body would decide if they will uh, want to do that. That except um, that the bill allows a public body, the chair presiding officer to allow the public to monitor or participate electronically in a meeting that would be up to the presiding officer or chair, but that's not for member participation in an actual virtual meeting, um, but the bill is silent, uh, leaving that to the control of the public body as to whether or not the body wants to hold the meetings virtually or not. Okay, and thank you, Madam Chair, and I apologize. One more question, uh, Councillor, thank you, is um, if, so when we talk about advisory committees, uh, so, for instance, the Tobacco Settlement Fund Committee, I apologize, I can't remember the specific name of that. Would that have been considered, I, it may still exist, is, is that considered an advisory committee, for, just as an example? Yes. Uh, under the definition, it's an advisory body because it makes reports and recommendations. It doesn't decide whether or not any of the entities get the money. It's deciding, it's making recommendations to the entity, the General Assembly, that decides who gets the money. Great, great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions for our witness? Seeing no questions for our witness, the witness is excused. And uh, I was informed that the headset I had had me over talking some of you. So I apologize if that happened, the joys of technology. Um, at this time, I'll turn to Senator Cludy. Okay. Senator Cloutier, there you are. Sponsor? This is for the sponsor. For the sponsor, so yes. Senator Hansen. Well, absolutely, yes. My questions were answered, but I want to commend you for all the hard work that everyone did, and I would love to be added as a sponsor. Thank you, yes. Noted. Anyone else? Let's see, I may have a couple other hands that have gone up. Senator Dalcalo. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to point out from my perspective and, and really just to share why I'm a prime sponsor and how I got involved in this. This originally began as an effort to make sure that we were providing a mechanism to give people who suffer from a variety of different types of medical conditions the chance to engage in civic participation uh, on a lot of different entities that are uh, of material significance to our state. And then that evolved, as we saw with the state of emergency and the circumstances that we're in, um, it became clear through this experience that we need to have a set of rules and procedures and mechanisms in place so that we can have the different aspects of our government in operation and so that we don't get caught flat-footed. Because I do hear not infrequently, actually, I hear pretty frequently from my constituents and from concerned folks out there that are worried about whether we are able to voice their concerns as we would, or whether the committee or commission or entity that they know has been working is able to continue the work that it's been tasked with doing and whether that all is happening. And so because we have a government of checks and balances, I view this as an essential part of creating that new process so that we can maintain those checks and balances, which is how it's supposed to be. So I do want to thank uh, Senator Hansen for including me to the level that she did on these discussions, many, many hours of conversation with the Department of Justice and with the uh, wonderful attorneys from the Division of Research, in particular, Debbie Goshawk and Mark Katrona. 
So I just wanted to add those thoughts to our discussion. And I certainly urge all of my colleagues to support this measure. Great. Um, Senator Lachman, your hand has gone up, ma'am. Yes, thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to request to be added as a sponsor. So noted. And Senator Lawson, your hand had gone up, sir. Senator Lawson, unless that was an accident. Senator Lawson. Senator, question to the sponsor, please. Senator Hansen. Yes. My concern is that the technology is great when you have it. Unfortunately, Western Kent County doesn't have it. Very unreliable. So those in those committees and, and who would like to avail themselves that have no possibility of doing so. And until such time as the state is truly covered, I think the bill is a little early. And so I will be voting no. Madam President. Senator Lawson, yes, if you, I mean, Senator Hanson, if you want to respond. Yeah, yes, I would like to respond. Senator Lawson, we, we thought a lot about that. Um, and that is the reason why the, that, that is part of the reason why virtual includes just the ability to hear. It doesn't mean you have to hear and see, but just hear. And so at its very base level, that can be phoning in. So although Western Sussex doesn't have very good uh, connectivity, as we've seen today, just with the experience that Senator Richardson has had. Everybody there has a phone. So they would be able to participate by phone under this bill as well and count towards quorum. Because that's one of the things that we hear from people from Western Sussex is they, they have a hard time participating on all these advisory boards and commissions. And we have so many of them with people that are not there from Sussex County because otherwise they have to drive to Wilmington or they've got to drive to Dover. Or they've got to, this bill finally allows them to contribute, be a part of that, mm -hmm. that board and commission by phone. This is for their benefit specifically because we know, we know that the technology is not there for them right now, but we want them to be able to participate. Senator Lawson, uh, was it that no. the completion of your dialogue or did you have a further no. comment? I see your hand still re remaining Thank up. You. Yes. Uh, uh, I appreciate the effort. Please don't get me wrong. The issue is phone service is not reliable here. For instance, where I live, my wife has to have AT&T. I have Verizon, Verizon, so at least one of us has phone reception here. There is no hardline service anymore. Verizon has done away with that. And so this whole area is, is subject to intermittent phone availability too. So again, I think, I think we're not considering as much as we could for this bill. I appreciate the expanse that has been done, but at the same time, uh, it's not good out here. And it's certainly, I'm in Western Kent, not Sussex. Thank you. Senator Townsend has raised his hand, as has Senator Poor. Senator Townsend. Thank you, Madam President. I ask to be added as a co-sponsor. Appreciate Senator Hansen's hard work. I'll also just note that um, although I do, do think there are consistent access issues in certain parts of Delaware, it's not only parts of Western Kent or Sussex. Um, my, in my district, literally where I live, as some of my colleagues know full well, my phone calls with me can be very hard to maintain a little quarter just south. And first of all, so many heads are nodding right now. It's kind of disheartening how many colleagues are agreeing with that. Uh, but both Verizon and AT&T have service issues just south of 95 in between the Salem Church Road and Route 273 area north of Old Baltimore Pike. Very frustrating. I've worked before to try to address it. You can imagine some emails will be going out um, for me later today about it as well. I've heard some from constituents on the issue. But that said, I, I, I just can't justify the idea that just because there are some pockets that don't have service, that we wouldn't support making this kind of framework accessible to the majority of constituents who, are, who, who do have service and who will be well served by being able to participate in our various forms of government through this kind of framework that Senator Hansen has led on. So happy to be a, happy to be a co-sponsor, um, Ed is a co-sponsor, happy to support it. Uh, and certainly look forward to working with colleagues on trying to address access issues for all Delawareans, but not waiting until those are solved in order to make this kind of progress. 
Thank you, Senator Townsend. Senator Poor. Thank you, Madam President. Um, as a co-prime of this piece of legislation and to all of my colleagues, um, recognizing just a, a, a short week ago that I had put an op-ed into the paper in regard to broadband. Um, it is super important that we have accessibility throughout the state of Delaware, but more importantly, I wanna recognize um, Kyle Hodges as well as uh, Terry Hancherick, the folks from the disabilities community, um, because they were uh, the main push to making sure that we provide access accessibility to everyone, whether you are visually impaired, whether you are in a wheelchair, um, you should still be able to have the ability to attend meetings, to participate in meetings, and to certainly give your thoughts. So I think that recognizing this particular piece of legislation, as we all have learned through the pandemic, that business is still going on. And so therefore, everyone should have a voice. This just has opened the door to let us see that we have excluded many people. And so now the pandemic, the ability to be able to run a virtual bill as we sit in a virtual session is paramount to the changes that we can make in the state of Delaware. So I am proud to actually be the co-prime of this bill to make sure that we see this through. Thank you, Senator Poor. While you were speaking, um, Senator Sokola and Petty John's hands went up as well as Senator Lawson and Benini. So we'll go in that order, Senator Sokola. Thank you, Madam President. I, uh, I really appreciate the work that the, the sponsors have done on this uh, piece of legislation. And one thing that I think should be pointed out here, uh, it has a sunset on it. And, and, and I think that's a really good thing, not because anybody wants this to go away, but it kind of forces us to look at this and to see what holes need to be filled and what unanticipated uh, elements need to be addressed so that we can better serve the public who are going to be able to benefit from, from this type of legislation. So I do want to be added as a co-sponsor, and then I look forward to supporting the bill. Great. So Senator Petty John, and then we will go to Senators Bonini and Lawson. Senator Petty John. Oh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I want to applaud the efforts of the sponsors of this bill. Um, I, I read Senator Poor's op-ed uh, last week, and I appreciate uh, you know your your input onto this issue, and it's an issue that you know we've been working on down here in Sussex County for a long time. Um, I ran across a news journal article uh, that was written probably 15 years ago uh, about this very same issue, and they interviewed my father uh, about his business, his his school bus contracting business, and the issues that he had up until very recently with broadband access. So, you know, this isn't just an issue with uh, that's that's really come because of the, the virtual learning uh, and, and everything that we're doing virtually now. It's an issue that has has been around for for longer than I've been in public service. Um, my main concern with this issue is or with this bill is the fact that there is not that ubiquitous access to broadband services yet. Um, this is something that, you know, if, if we could come in and get 99% coverage through our rural areas within Delaware, um, if, if we could get our cell phone providers to uh, expand their coverage and make sure that uh, our cell service was reliable from Gumboro to Greenville, then I wouldn't have a problem with this. Uh, the issue that I really have is that that service is not reliable. Uh, there are families that just don't have access, no matter what they have. You know, they can't get uh, Comcast, they can't get Verizon, they can't get AT um, and T, and they're left out in this entire discussion. Uh, they're left out of being able to participate in a lot of these types of meetings. If they wanted to go on and uh, and, and view what we're doing today. That's something that they would have to drive to a McDonald's or go to a library or go somewhere to find. They, weren't, they would not be able to participate in these types of meetings. If they were on a public body, they would not be able to participate in those public bodies. Um, I, I, I do applaud the, the sponsors of this bill. I applaud the idea. 
I just think we need a little bit of time to, to really fill in some of these gaps that already exist rather than try, rather than pass this, let it sunset, and in the meantime, try to fill in some of those gaps that are, are glaringly obvious, especially down here in, in Sussex County. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Senator. Next, we'll go in the order in which the hands had raised. Um, Senator Benini, Senator Lawson, Senator Hansen again. Senator Benini. Thank you, and I'll, I'll be brief, Madam President. Uh, the reason I asked the attorney about the tobacco fund is, Madam President, you would know, so please correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think the General Assembly has ever not spent the money exactly as that quote unquote advisory committee uh, chose. Is that, uh, and it was tens of millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are throughout government, quote unquote, advisory committees that act in reality as, as legislative bodies. Uh, you know, how many times, uh, I think we're gonna see this, this virtual session, how many times have we simply passed bills saying, oh, this task force met, this is, this is, this is what the recommendations are. And I will tell you that I don't think virtual, uh, as you know, I voted against the resolution for virtual sessions. I do not think this is a, the, the best way for us to communicate. I am absolutely 100% supportive of allowing um, access for those with disabilities. And quite frankly, I, I be honest with you, I didn't realize that was not the case. And I would happily support and sponsor and author a bill that specifically solved that problem. But I'm very concerned about this. Um, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna create, uh, you know, incentives, and please, under no circumstances, Senator Hansen or, or, or others who work on this disparage, thank you for all your efforts. But I'm just very concerned about the unintended consequences of, of we're going to end up with um, very significant decisions made without the access and, and in-person participation that I think we, we would be more comfortable with. So uh, I'll be voting no. I, like I said, I do wish we had a bill that was specifically uh, we create access for those uh, those with disabilities. I think that's a great idea, but I do have some some pretty strong concerns about this. And again, appreciate everybody's work, but but I I will not be supporting it. Madam President, thank you. I hope I apologize if I went on too long. That's fine. Senator Lawson. Then we have Senator Hanson, Senator Townsend, Senator Lawson. Thank you, ma'am. I've been dealing with DTI for over well just about six years now on this, and I've been fed. Their promises that turned to be false. I've fed, been fed their information that we we're going to have service out here under surf, Blue Surf by May, and it goes on. And so far, we don't have it. And so I'm a little oversensitive, maybe, but Western Kent County has been left way out. And there is no way possible that these people can get in there. I just got a quote from Comcast for cable here at my home, $18,000, $18,000 to run Comcast here. These people out here, I mean, I don't know how they're gonna come up with that kind of money to get reliable service, but you see the, the problem that we have out here and various other places, but $18,000 to get cable run into one residence out here and the guy around the corner is 11,000 another one is 14,000 it just doesn't work so again I appreciate all the efforts I just think it's a wee bit premature thank you all and um I have um you know allowed members to have really open dialogue we we do reflect that there are many forms under virtual meeting format. Um, and I do feel the sense from all of their concerns with broadband. So for those who are listening in, we are staying focused on the bill, but again, allowing people in their perspective as it fits into uh, their view of virtual. Senator Hansen, you are next. And then yes. Senator Townsend, Senator Hansen. Thank you, Madam, Pre Madam Chair. I just want to respond to what Senator Pettyjohn had said, and I think might be a concern with some of the others as well, is that there are folks that don't have access to broadband service. They Maybe they don't have a phone. They're going to be let out of the whole discussion when it comes to the ability to, to serve on an advisory body. That will not be the case 
because advisory bodies are still required to hold an anchor location where people can meet in person. There must be an anchor location. So we're not taking away their ability to participate any way that they've already had, that they, they had in the past. We're just opening up the ability for them to participate if they can, virtually or by phone. There will still be an in-person anchor location for that meeting to take place, just as there currently is a requirement today. So we're not taking anything away with this bill. We're giving them something, giving them an ability with the bill. Thank you, Senator Hanson. Senator Townsend. Um, thank you, Madam President. I don't, I don't want to pretend like I have hope that I'll sway Senator Benini in his vote here, but I do just want to note, given he specifically um, referenced the, uh, the tobacco settlement fund, which I currently serve on, I'm pretty confident it's accurate to say that um, recommendations from that group have not always been followed. Um, it, but if, if that is not accurate, I can certainly say because Senator Benini referenced other efforts, I just want to note that spanning such bipartisan efforts as the um, Revenue Stability uh, Task Force that I that I uh, co-chaired and, and worked with Senator Lavelle and former Treasurer Simpler, um, you know, those recommendations ended up being on a shelf. The Clean Water Task Force, you know, much to the dismay of seeing, you know, flooding in agricultural field, fields and rotting crops has, has sort of sat on a shelf. So uh, these sort of groups that do great work and try to present us with solutions um, it's not any any way, shape, or form the truth that they are somehow, you know, solutions that are adopted automatically over the over the objection of the General Assembly, even for the betterment of Delawareans. It still runs through the process here in Dover, uh, virtually here in Dover, whether that's fiscally or otherwise, legislatively. And so I, I just want to know, I don't think there's any concern or shouldn't be any real concern uh, based on, on, on past precedent that groups that we're talking about here are somehow going to subvert the will of the General Assembly. We still rightfully have the tough choices to make, and I hope we can do a better job of making them. Um, but I just think it's all about trying to provide access of the sort that Senator Hansen has eloquently explained. And I would just hope that we bear that in mind as we cast our votes here. I believe everyone has had the opportunity to speak. If not, you can say so now. Otherwise, I will go to Senator Hansen uh, for the bill, ma'am. Roll call, please. Madam Secretary, would you kindly call the roll on Senate substitute number one to Senate bill number 243? Senator Panini. No. No. Senator Brown. Yes. Yes. Senator Cloutier. Yes. Yes. Senator Del Colo. Yes. Yes. Senator Ennis. Yes. Yes. Senator Hansen. Yes. Yes. Senator Hawker. No. No. Senator Lawson. No. No. Senator Lockman. Yes. Yes. Senator Lopez. Yes. Yes. Senator McBride. Yes. Yes. Senator McDowell. Yes. Yes. Senator Pardee. Yes. Yes. Senator Pettyjohn. No. No. Senator Poor. Yes. Yes. Senator Richardson. No. 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 Senator Sokola. Yes. Yes. Senator Sturgeon. Yes. Yes. Senator Townsend. Yes. Yes. Senator Walsh. Yes. Yes. Senator Wilson. Yes. Yes. Madam President, the roll call on Senate Substitute 1 for Senate Bill 243, 15 yes, 6 no. Having received the required and sufficient number of votes, Senate Substitute Number 1, for Senate Bill 243, declare pass the Senate. Senator Poor, to you. Thank you, Madam President. At this time, I ask that Consent Agenda 1 be brought before the Senate for consideration. Madam Secretary, if I could have, please, the bill up for our Consent Agenda 1, the bills handed to our Assistant Secretary, for which he could read in by title only. 
Thank you. Consent agenda one, Senate substitute number one for Senate bill number 229, sponsored by Senator Pettyjohn and Representative Vanderwin, an act to amend the town of Bridgeville charter relating to disqualification of elective officers. Senate bill number 236, sponsored by Senator Lopez and Representative Schwarzkopf, an act to amend the charter of Dewey Beach relating to the power to impose and collect a lodging tax. House bill number 269, sponsored by Representative Gray and Senator Hawker, an act to amend the charter of the town of Ocean View relating to council terms of office. And House bill number 270, 297, excuse me, sponsored by Representative D. Short and Senator Richardson, an act to amend the charter of the city of Seaford relating to fiscal procedures. Madam President, that concludes the reading of Senate consent agenda number one. Consent agenda number one is before the Senate uh, under suspension of rules and a reminder since these are all charter changes, each of the bills will require for the entire agenda would be a two thirds vote. Senator Port. Thank you, Madam President. As you uh, just stated, uh, this consent agenda contains four charter changes. They were requested by the Delaware local governments. Uh, the bills on this agenda have been reviewed by the members of both caucuses. And so if there are no questions, I would like to ask for a roll, uh, roll call on consent agenda one. Um, Senator Benini has raised his hand. Uh, Senator Benini. Thank, thank you, Madam President. Very briefly, I just wanted to say thank you to the majority caucus, the pro tem and the majority leader. Uh, I do think that these were all uh, given to us in plenty of time. When we had concerns, they were removed from the consent agenda and voted on separately. And uh, uh, I just wanted to uh, pass on my personal appreciation for that. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. So Senator Poor, I believe you were getting ready to call for a roll call on the consent agenda, am I correct? Yes, Madam President, I ask for a roll call. Madam Secretary, would you kindly call roll on consent agenda number one, reminding members two thirds required vote. Senator Panini. Yes. Yes. Senator Brown. Yes. Yes. Senator Cloutier. Yes. Yes. Senator Del Colo. Yes. Yes. Senator Ennis. Yes. Yes. Senator Hansen. Yes. Yes. Senator Hawker. Yes. Yes. Senator Lawson. Yes. Yes. Senator Lockman. Yes. Yes. Senator Lopez. Yes. Yes. Senator McBride. Yes. Yes. Senator McDowell. Yes. Yes. Senator Pardee. Yes. Yes. Senator Pettyjohn. Yes. Yes. Senator Poor. Yes. Senator Richardson. Yes. Yes. Senator Sokola. Yes. Yes. Senator Sturgeon. Yes. Yes. Senator Townsend. Yes. Yes. Senator Walsh. Yes. Yes. Senator Wilson. Yes. Yes. Madam President, the roll call on consent agenda one containing Senate Substitute 1 for Senate Bill 229, wow. Senate Bill 236, House Bill 269, and House Bill 297, 21. Having received the required sufficient number of votes, consent agenda number one declared passed the Senate as bills are duly noted. Senator Poor. Thank you, Madam President. I ask that consent agenda two be brought before the Senate for consideration. Madam Secretary, would you kindly hand the consent agenda number two bill portfolio to our assistant secretary and ask that he uh, read in the bills comprising uh, consent agenda two. Senate consent agenda number two, Senate bill number 237, an act to amend title 31 of the Delaware code relating to dental care for adult Medicaid recipients sponsored by Senator Townsend, Representative Siegfried, Senator Cloutier. 
House Bill number 263 with House Amendment 1, sponsored by Representative Bentz, Representative Bennett, Representative Dorsey Walker, Representative Minor Brown, Senator Townsend, and others an act to amend Title 18 and Title 29 of the Delaware Code relating to cost sh sharing prescription insulin drugs. Senate Bill number 223, sponsored by Senator Hansen, Representative Osinski, and others, an act to amend Title 21 of the Delaware Code relating to disqualification from driving a commercial motor vehicle. Senate Bill number 227, sponsored by Senator Hansen, Senator Cloutier, and others, an act to amend Title 21 of the Delaware Code relating to commercial learner permits. House Bill number 301, sponsored by Representative Bentz, Senator Lachman, and others, an act to amend Title 29 of the Delaware Code relating to the state employee's pension plan. House Bill number 331, sponsored by Representative D. Short, Representative Dukes, Representative Shortskopf, and Senator Hawker, an act to amend Title IX of the Delaware Code relating to Sussex County government. House Bill number 334, sponsored by Representative Bush, Senator Pardee, and others, an act to amend Title XII of the Delaware Code relating to descendants of states and fiduciary re relations. House Bill number 335, sponsored by Representative Bush, Senator Pardee, and others, an act to amend Title 12 of the Delaware Code relating to restricted access to safe deposit boxes for the retrieval of descendants' last will and declaration of last remains. Madam President, that concludes the reading of Senate Consent Agenda Number 2. Thank you, Mr. Assistant Secretary. Uh, I think I was muted there a moment. At this time, I will turn to our Senate Majority Leader, Senator Poor. Our consent agenda two is uh, before the Senate. Thank you, Madam President. At this time, uh, I'd just like to state that the bills on the first consent agenda um, basically are uh, seen in the same view that the consent agenda two was made available to each of the senators and hopefully they had enough time to review. I believe they have, um, and I appreciate the kind words from Senator Benini. So if there are no questions at this time, I ask for a roll call on consent agenda two. Madam Secretary, would you kindly call roll on consent agenda two? Senator Benini. Yes. Yes. Senator Brown. Yes. Yes. Senator Cloutier. Yes. Yes. Senator Del Colo. Yes. Yes. Senator Ennis. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Senator Hansen. Yes. Yes. Senator Hawker. Yes. Yes. Senator Lawson. Yes. Yes. Senator Lockman. Yes. Yes. Senator Lopez. Yes. 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 Senator McBride. Yes. Yes. Senator McDowell. Yes. Yes. Senator Pardee. Yes. Yes. Senator Pettyjohn. Yes. Yes. Senator Poor. Yes. Yes. Senator Richardson. Yes. 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 Senator Sokola. Yes. Yes. Senator Sturgeon. Yes. Yes. Senator Townsend. Yes. Yes. Senator Walsh. Yes. Yes. Senator Wilson. Yes. Yes. Madam President, the roll call on consent agenda two containing Senate Bill 237, House Bill 263 as amended by House Amendment 1, Senate Bill 223, Senate Bill 227, House Bill 301, House Bill 331, House Bill 334, and House Bill 335. 21. Thank you. Having received the required and sufficient number of votes, the consent agenda two hereby declared passed the Senate. Senator Poor. Thank you, Madam President. Um, at this time, I would ask if there are any announcements. Madam President. 
Senator McBride. Madam President, thank you. Uh, Madam President and members of the Senate, uh, on June the 23rd, we're scheduling, I am scheduling an executive committee meeting at 2 p.m. for the purpose of considering gubernatorial nomination. The plan then would be at 3.30, the Senate would go into regular session broadcast virtually to consider gubernatorial nominations and other matters that uh, may come before the Senate. I am hopeful that in the next several days to publish out on the internet for uh, public as well as the members of staff, the agenda for that day. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, sir. Senator Sokola, your hands up, raised. Thank you, Madam President. Just a reminder to the Bond Bill Committee members, there is a Bond Bill Committee meeting this Thursday, uh, as and they should have all received notice of the details. Thank you. Senator Poor, I don't see any other hands raised. And I want to say to all members, thank you for your tolerance as we work through the virtual world. And uh, we are going to be correcting Senator Darius Brown, so you know. Um, you had a question on how you were recorded on one of your votes, and we will make sure it is accurate as to how you voted on the floor, sir. Yes, so you, for Madam that, ma'am, I'll turn to you, Senator Poor. You're welcome, Senator Brown. Senator Poor. Thank you, Madam President. And uh, as with this pandemic, everything has been history making. So congratulations to Senator Brown. Uh, on the passing of his bill and the support of Senator Lopez and all of the colleagues that I work with. Uh, it's, a, it's a great day. With that being said, I move the session conducted in virtual format stands in recess until the 23rd of June at 3.30. Hearing no objection, the Senate stands in recess. Have a great day.